Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be talking about how to start a full coverage cross stitch piece. Um, I will be showing you that in this video. Thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Inga and the channel is called Ink Stitch. Um, you can also find me on Instagram and TikTok by the same name Ink Stitch if you want to see a little bit more. Um, I usually post updates uh, weekly, sometimes daily, it really depends. Uh, please, if you like this video, press subscribe like button that helps everybody else to find my videos easier um, and please comment down below if you've got any questions so we will start with me showing you which kit we will be talking about today and which one we will be starting so i am starting this kit by Mareshka. um i believe this was I want to say maybe Ukrainian. I'm not 100% sure, but I know that they have moved to Poland. So they assemble their kids in Poland now. Um, and this is their New York piece. Now, as you can see, this kit in particular here, it comes with um, Ada or even weave threads needle and symbol pattern. So that's usually what you would get in a cross stitch kit. Now I will show you what you need to start a full coverage piece. First of all, you will probably need a Q-snap or a hoop of some sort. Here you can see mine. Um, this one's eight by eight inches. It's my most favorite um, size really. Uh, oh, I'm sorry if you can hear outside noise. Um, it's my favorite size. Um, 11 by 11 is a little bit too big for me. Um, I don't find it as comfortable. However, you know, sometimes I do stitch with the 11 by 17 Q snap and that kind of thing. Um, of course, you can use a hoop instead, but this is what I tend to use. Um, it does have the clamps on the side, and this is what I will be using today. The second item you will probably need, again, you don't need it, but preferably you should have it, uh, some sort of pins to mark um, where you need to be on the fabric. Alternatively, well, or in addition to this, you can get a ruler of some sort or a tailor's measuring tape. Now, it's probably a good idea to have a, some sort of a bag or something to hold your kit in. Um, you can buy them handmade or you can get these ones from Amazon. I will link everything down below so you could find it very easily without having to search for it. So that's another item. And then last but not least, this again, this isn't compulsory. This is your choice. If you think this will make your life a little bit easier, is some sort of floss organizer. Some people use bobbins, you can do that, or use an organizer like this. Again, I'll link it down below, or you can just keep what was provided within the kit. But that is it of what you will need. Now let's see what was in the actual kit and what you would normally get. So you would normally get a fabric of some sort. Now this one's Ada, 16 count Ada. I don't know if that will zoom in well enough for you to see. It also comes with a needle and the needle normally is either already in the actual fabric like this one here or it will come in a separate packet that you have to open. Next up, we have the most important, well, one of the most important parts is the actual threads. Now, Mareshka has these floss cards here, uh, but each kit will differ. It really depends which company you're having. Just as an example, I will show you what dimensions organizers look like. So if you're getting a dimensions gold kit, they would come these with these floss cards over here so a little bit different again you can move these ones onto the organizer like this or onto bobbins if you would like to but i just keep them as they are and then leftovers i just loop them over and then just it, next to the color to the actual mark here but you don't have to do that and then i just normally um sort of braid them to make sure that no no threads are hanging everywhere but you don't have to do it this way. Uh, it's absolutely up to you. 
Now this kit specifically came with these floss cards which I'm going to keep. I'm not going to do anything with them. Um, they're very very convenient. I really like them. Uh, what I'll be doing is just cutting a length using that thread and then if there's anything le left over just wrap it back up. And then the third part, well the fourth part of the kit is the actual pattern. Now I'm going to try to show you very quickly because I can't really show you the pattern so you wouldn't steal it. <laughs> Here we are. This kit particularly has one, two, three and four double-sided A3 papers. They also contain a key so normally they will have keys on the actual pattern like this so normally you will get a symbol a number you need so that's the floss number that they marked on the cards and how many strands you will need for this fabric so if let's say you decide not to use this fabric and decide to use something else something that you've replaced it with if again you would have to change the strands used so let's say you're using a different count instead of 16 you're using 14 um, and that's bigger squares so for fuller coverage you might need to use three strands now in that case you may not have enough floss that was provided within the kit because you're using more than they have suggested so i would always try to use higher count fabric than what was in the kit meaning smaller squares so that's what we have so far now the first things first what i tend to do and i have already done i to make my life a little bit easier i normally try to put the actual symbols next to the colors like you can see i have done here and all of them have been already done i always always do this you can do the same using the organizer so it already comes with these cards where you just draw the actual symbol rather than numbers and insert them inside the organizer. That means that when you see, let's say, a symbol on the pattern, like this one here. So let's say the symbol is this, oh, here we go. The symbol is this square. If you didn't mark it on your floss, you would have to find out what the square means. So that's thread 30 and then find that thread on the cards. Instead, what we are doing is we're seeing the square in the pattern going straight to our floss and looking for the square symbol. You're sort of skipping that one step of having to pull out your pattern again, looking, searching, then going to the threads. So you're saving yourself so, so, so much time. It's definitely very useful and I would highly, 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 highly recommend it. Next step is sort of got a couple of different variations. So what I normally do, I open up my fabric just to see how big it is overall. And it's normally folded so you can see exactly where the middle is. So this one's got the middle here. And what I tend to do is use my pins that I have over here and mark the actual um, middle. You can use any pins. You can use needles instead of the pins. If you don't have pins, I just have them in my sewing stash. Here we are. So then I'll just pick it up and go all the way up to the middle and mark my middle and I normally the way I do it I mark it across two squares meaning that my middle is in the middle of those two it's just how I do it but you don't have to do it that way so now we have our middle which was very easy to find so the reason why we're doing this is for you to decide how you're going to start the piece each kit as a standard normally recommends starting in the middle of the pattern it is quite easy to find the middle of the pattern because patterns normally have these little tags at the top like this this marks the middle so you're looking one at the top and you're looking the same one somewhere on the side and then you just sort of go down where this one is go down where the one on the side is and you know that your middle is somewhere down there obviously there isn't one here but if there was the middle would be over here and you can start from this end here now 
I don't tend to start from the middle from here, but you can, and then you can obviously work in one of the um, one of the quarters, or sort of just make your way through it as you wish. What I tend to do, I tend to start on this corner here at the top. Um, so I do have to mark my fabric to make sure that I'm starting in the right space, in the right position to allow some um, space for framing and that is going to fit in my fabric. And to do that, there's a few different ways. You can either use measuring tape because kits normally tell you how big they're going to be. Um, normally tells you the centimeter wise. You just have to really carefully look at the actual pattern, what it says, okay? So it will say somewhere how big the actual pattern is when stitched. So you could just measure divided by two. So the entire length of the pattern divided by two. Start from here, put your ruler over here or measuring tape and measure all the way up to where it ends. Let's say your you know, height of the stitched piece is meant to be 40 centimeters. So you measure 20 from this end here. And then what you would do, once you have measured that, you will mark it here. So let's say 20 centimeters is maybe, let's say here. Again, I do it over two threads, over two squares. So your middle is in between the two. So that's where the top is. Okay, the next step is to measure sideways. Again, let's say your pattern says that it's going to be 13, 30, 30 centimeters wide. So you half it and then measure with a measuring tape or, um, you know, tailor's tape. You measure 15 centimeters from this point all the way up to here. And let's say it's over here. And this will be, for me, that's my starting point. Alternatively, and this is what I I tend to do instead of measuring I count so each kit will tell you how wide it is and how long it is rather than centimeters but stitch wise and if it doesn't you can always do it yourself so let's say here at the top uh, let's see if you, you can see the numbers here at the top so that tells you how wide it is okay and then I would just count the little squares with my magnifying glass if let's say it says as we've said that's 20 centimeters so let's say there's on the pattern it says it's 150 stitches so I would count 150 little squares go up to the top mark it and do the same to the side that's more precise um, and I like to do that instead of measuring with the tape because it means that it's absolutely correct and there's no error because if you make a mistake here and you start stitching you will have to frog everything out to redo it or you'll have to attach extra fabric to the sides to make enough space for framing so that's that um, your next step is putting the actual fabric on the q-snap um, and i will show you once it's on in a second okay so once you have added um, the Q-snap, it should look something like this um, without the grime guard. I bought this on Etsy. The grime guard is optional. It just helps to keep the fabric on the side so it's not flopping about. Um, you can obviously get that or make it yourselves. And here you go. You can start stitching. Um, you will have marked with the pins where your corner is or where your middle is. Depends on how you decide to do it. And here we go. Unfortunately, I did forget to show you an optional step. Um, so as you can see, I've already started stitching on this piece. Um, but what I've managed to do is grid it. Now, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this. The way I do it is using a water soluble pen, which I will link down below as well so you could see it. And I just follow it and grid it based on the actual pattern. You can also use maybe a sulky thread to grid it with a thread. Now that will take you much longer, I think, in my mind. And these lines will come off in water. So it's up to you which 
option you want to go for and again you don't have to do it but it's an optional thing just to make it a little bit easier for your stitching you will be following the pattern and stitching it based on the symbols so let's say it's a square if you've marked it on your threads you're looking a square symbol within all of your threads now some people mark their paper patterns with markers to mark where they have already stitched some people mark it with pens it depends what you like to do i would also highly recommend photocopying your pattern just to make sure that you know you don't destroy the original by an accident because if something happens you will have nothing and here we are so this will be my new start um, for today i hope this video was useful if you have never started a full coverage piece i hope this will help you to make a bit of a start um, don't be intimidated yes it is a big 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 piece it will take you a lot of time some people manage to do it in you know three to six months um, if it's the only thing you're working on some people it takes years because you have a lot of different whips whip is a work in progress um, so it really depends but i hope this video was helpful um, i hope it will encourage you and inspire you to start uh, your first full coverage piece or maybe if not the first one then you refreshed on your knowledge um, thank you so much for stopping by please press subscribe like comment down below i will see you next time bye